China's humanoid robot race just took a big step forward, and this time, there's no debate. A new video from Engine AI is spreading everywhere, showing the full-size T-800 robot delivering a strike so strong that the company's own CEO is knocked off his feet. There are no effects, no edits, and no tricks. It all happens in one clean shot. At the same time, Tesla's Optimus fell during a live public demo, raising fresh questions about balance and control. And over in China, Xpeng revealed new details about its iron humanoid, a robot built not for flashy demos, but for real-world work. Hey guys, welcome to AI Nexus, your home for the latest breakthroughs in AI and humanoid robots. China's humanoid robotics race just jumped to a new level, and this time, the evidence is undeniable. A new Engine AI clip is dominating every platform right now, showing a full-size T-800 robot delivering a strike so clean and powerful that the CEO is lifted off the ground and dropped straight onto the mat. No VFX theories, no editing tricks, just pure mechanical force captured in one continuous shot. This footage arrives only days after millions questioned whether the T-800's spinning kicks and high-speed motions were real or CGI. So Engine AI didn't argue. They demonstrated. CEO Zhao Tongyang suited up in heavy protective gear, stepped into the test arena, and faced the robot his own team built. What happened next didn't just shut down the CGI rumors. It shifted the entire conversation about what modern humanoids are actually capable of. As Zhao positions himself with a padded shield, the T-800 stabilizes, aligns its stance, and fires off a precise high-torque kick. The impact sends Zhao airborne instantly. This isn't reckless force, it's controlled power. Pay attention to what happens after the kick. The robot doesn't wobble. It doesn't flinch. Its balance resets in milliseconds thanks to gyroscopic sensors and a real-time control loop engineered for combat-grade stability. This wasn't a publicity stunt, it was a stress demonstration. Engine AI's way of proving that the T-800 is built for force, unpredictability, and dynamic motion, not just simple walking demos. All of this leads directly into their upcoming Robot Boxer event on December 24th, where these machines will take on a series of controlled physical challenges. What Engine AI just proved with the T-800 isn't about violence or spectacle, it's about trust in physical intelligence. Once a humanoid can deliver force, recover balance, and remain stable under impact, the conversation shifts from can it move to can it operate safely around humans? That same question sits at the core of another major Chinese project, one that isn't focused on combat, but on long-term integration into everyday human environments. Xpeng's humanoid roadmap just became a lot clearer. At the 2026 Geek Park F Innovation Conference, Xpeng CEO, Hsiao Peng stepped on stage and broke down the reasoning behind one of China's most ambitious robotics projects, the Iron Humanoid. And instead of talking about hype, he focused on the fundamentals. Why a humanoid shape matters, what data will power it, and how Xpeng plans to avoid the mistakes other companies make. Hsiao Peng explained that the world is built for humans. Our doors, our tools, our workspaces, everything. So if a robot is going to operate in those spaces without redesigning the entire environment, the form factor has to match us. That's why Xpeng chose a human-style frame. Universal compatibility. No special stations, no custom layouts. Just plug a humanoid into the world we already use. The second pillar is data. Xpeng's robot isn't starting from zero. Decades of human behavior videos, Motion datasets and real-world demonstrations create a massive training foundation. A humanoid body means it can directly learn those patterns instead of translating them into a non-human form factor. More data equals faster learning and more reliable autonomy. Then he revealed the part that stole the show, the engineering inside iron. Xpeng built a flexible, multi-joint mechanical skeleton that mimics human anatomy, especially the spine. That bionic backbone lets the robot bend, stabilize, and shift weight the way a person does, a critical requirement for safe movement around humans. He Xiao Peng made one thing clear. Xpeng isn't trying to build a niche robot that does one task. Scalability is the end game. A general purpose humanoid that fits anywhere people work, retail floors, office environments, hotel lobbies, and beyond. 
The message was straightforward. Iron isn't just a flashy demo robot. It's Xpeng's attempt to build a platform that can live and operate naturally in human spaces, powered by data, shaped by biology, and designed for real-world scale. Xpeng's philosophy highlights something critical. Building a humanoid isn't about flashy demos. It's about compatibility, data, and scale. And that same logic is exactly what Tesla has been pushing with Optimus. Different companies, different execution, same end goal. A humanoid that works in the real world, learns from massive data sets, and eventually becomes affordable enough to deploy everywhere people work. You remember Tesla's big shareholder meeting this November, where Elon Musk revealed the first details of Optimus Gen 3 coming next year and said this robot could change humanity forever? That announcement set massive expectations. Tesla made it clear that Optimus isn't just a prototype anymore. It's a long-term vision of affordable, scalable humanoid labor that could reshape entire industries. Now, fast forward to Miami, where Optimus showed up for a public demo, and things took an unexpected turn. During the event, Optimus was handing out water bottles, interacting with the crowd, even doing a little dance routine. Everything looked smooth, until it suddenly lost balance and fell backward. And just as it dropped, the robot's hands moved toward its head, almost like a person removing a VR headset, even though Optimus wasn't wearing anything. That single motion triggered instant online speculation. Was this a remote-controlled moment? Here's the thing. Robots fall. Every company in this space deals with stumbles. The unusual part was the gesture, not the fall itself. And the timing made the conversation louder. Just days earlier, Tesla had posted polished lab footage of Optimus walking with near-perfect balance and performing martial arts-style motions. So the contrast caught everyone off guard. Elon Musk jumped in quickly, denying any remote control and sharing more martial arts clips with the caption, AI, not teleoperated. The technology behind Optimus is real, and the progress is visible. The Miami stumble doesn't erase that. If anything, it highlights what every robotics company already knows. Humanoid movement in the real world is one of the hardest engineering challenges on the planet. Tesla is still pushing toward a mass-produced humanoid at around $20,000, a price point that could change the industry overnight. Musk has even talked about factories where robots help build more robots. It's ambitious, but Tesla has a track record of scaling tech faster than anyone expects. For now, Optimus is still one of the most promising humanoid projects in the world. The vision is massive, the pace is aggressive, and even with a stumble, the momentum hasn't slowed down. While Tesla focuses on human-like form and cost reduction, other companies are questioning a deeper assumption that humanoids must look like humans at all. Because once robots move from demos into factories, efficiency starts to matter more than resemblance. And that's where a radically different approach emerges. One that abandons imitation and instead redesigns the humanoid specifically for industrial dominance. Medea didn't just upgrade a humanoid robot, Medea multiplied it. Traditional humanoid robots come with two arms because they are built to copy the human body. Two hands, two tasks, limited reach. Even the most advanced robots, Optimus, Figure 02, Unitree H1, all follow this same template. They try to solve human problems with human hardware. Miro Yu throws that limitation out the window. With six arms, Miro Yu can do things no two-arm robot can even attempt. Two arms can hold a heavy component steady. Two more can assemble smaller parts with precision. Another pair can swap tools or prepare the next step. All of this happens at the same time. No pausing, no repositioning, no one task at a time bottleneck. A two-arm robot has to perform actions in sequence. Miro Yu performs them in parallel. This alone can transform a production line. Now add Medea's instant tool swap system. A normal humanoid needs to stop, pick a new tool, or reposition. Miro Yu just hands itself the next tool with a different arm and keeps going. It feels less like a humanoid robot and more like a self-contained factory unit. Medea revealed this robot in December 2025 at a tech forum in Guangzhou, and the first deployment is already locked in. Miro Yu is scheduled for Medea's washing machine factory in Wuxi by the end of the year, 
aiming for a 30% boost in production line adjustments. One Miro U could replace several employees across multiple shifts, simply because its six-arm design never stops working. And this raises a bigger question for the entire industry. If six arms work better, if parallel tasks beat sequential tasks, why are humanoid robots still copying humans? Medea is betting that the future of humanoids won't look like us at all. And Miro Yu might be the first real example. Miro Yu shows what happens when design prioritizes output over familiarity. But not every environment rewards extra limbs. UK-based firm Humanoid just revealed their new humanoid robot, the HMND-01 Alpha. Earlier, the company introduced the HMND-01, a wheeled humanoid focused purely on dull, boring, and dirty industrial work, not home tasks. Humanoid is not trying to build a friendly household assistant. The company is aiming straight at warehouses, factories, and logistics centers where reliability matters more than personality. And now, with the new Zero One Alpha, they're taking a bold step into full bipedal movement. HMND Zero One Alpha walked perfectly within 48 hours of training, just two days. While most companies spend weeks or even months teaching robots to take stable steps, this robot was already moving confidently as if it had been doing it for years. At 5 feet 10 inches tall and 198 pounds, the Alpha is human-sized, which means it can fit through doorways, climb stairs, and work on uneven floors where wheeled robots usually fail. But here's where things get wild. Humanoid built this entire robot from scratch in only five months. In the rest of the industry, developing a bipedal prototype normally takes 18 to 24 months. So how did HMD speedrun this process? The company used NVIDIA Isaac Sim and crammed 52 million seconds of simulated walking practice into just two days. That's basically 19 months of walking experience compressed into a weekend, like uploading years of training directly into the robot. Thanks to that simulation-first approach, the HMND-01 Alpha can walk forward, backward, sidestep obstacles, spin, squat, and even hop. It moves at around 3.4 miles per hour. And while the wheeled version is faster, this bipedal model dominates environments filled with stairs, tight corridors, or cluttered industrial floors. During stress tests, even when pushed hard with a pole, the Alpha stumbles but catches balance immediately. No dramatic falls. It runs for three hours on swappable batteries, lifts 33 pounds with both arms, and comes in at a price of $120,000. HMND expects the first deployments to roll out across warehouses, distribution hubs, retail stores, and manufacturing lines. HMND's rapid development proves that humanoids can move from simulation to deployment faster than ever before. But individual breakthroughs only matter if they scale. The next real milestone isn't walking, balance, or speed, it's production. And that's where one Chinese company just crossed a number that turns experimentation into industry. Agibot just hit a milestone that shows how fast the humanoid industry is scaling, 5,000 robots manufactured. The company marked the moment with a live-streamed factory event where co-founder Peng Jihui rolled out the 5,000th unit on stage, a Linksy X2. And to make the reveal unforgettable, Agibot handed the robot to actor Huang Xiaoming, complete with a special Xiaoming mode personality tuned to match his gestures and sense of humor. The actor stepped forward to test the robot's motion learning system. Every move he made, the robot copied instantly. Quick poses, fast changes, small gestures. The crowd absolutely loved it, but the real importance of this moment wasn't the performance. It was the number. Hitting 5,000 units shows that Agibot can mass produce humanoid robots, not just build prototypes. Here's how those 5,000 robots break down. 1,742 Expedition A-Series full-size models. 1,846 Link CX-Series Agile Compact Robots. 1,412 Spirit G-Series Task-Focused Units. And these systems aren't collecting dust in warehouses. Agile Bot robots are already being used across eight job categories, including reception, stage performances, manufacturing, warehouse logistics, security patrols, commercial cleaning, AI training data collection, and education research. During the event, Peng Jihui explained why the milestone matters. 
Reaching 5,000 units proves their supply chain, design consistency, and production quality are holding up at scale. And once humanoid robots are produced in large volumes, costs drop, making them more realistic for everyday business use. Agibot isn't claiming to be the only one doing this. But this milestone shows that humanoid robots are finally moving from small batch experiments to true industrial scale production. It's a sign of where the entire industry is heading. Medea showed that copying the human body isn't always the smartest path. Six arms and parallel work can beat human limits. Humanoid proved that training timelines are collapsing, with years of walking experience compressed into days. Tesla reminded everyone how brutal real-world autonomy still is, even for the most advanced projects. Engine AI pushed physical capability into a new zone with the T-800, while Xpeng focused on building humanoids that actually fit into human spaces. And Agibot delivered the clearest signal of all. Scale is finally happening. Different approaches, same direction. Humanoid robots are moving out of labs and into factories, warehouses, and public environments. The shift is no longer theoretical. The real question now isn't if humanoid robots become normal, it's how fast and which designs survive.